Yeah, I was a little surprised about that. It's quite a change from the old stadium. There's pictures. Oh, okay. Whitney. When I was in high school, we played in Whitney Stadium. We played in the college. You know, when we You're tuned to Energy Matters on KFIRE 550 99.7 FM in Bismarck and Mandan, 1440 KLTC in Dickinson, and, or 1460 KLTC in Dickinson, and 1440 KKXL in Grand Forks. I'm Steve Bakken. This hour of Energy Matters brought to you by Larson Engineering, Bakken Energy Service, and Riley Brothers Construction, uh, along with my co host Tim Fisher for Bakken Energy Services. And joining us now on the program, Senator John Hoban. Uh, Senator, what an historic day, not only for North Dakota, but truly for the United States as well. Yeah, you know, just a great day. First uh, greenfield refinery constructed in the United States since 1956. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, when we had the groundbreaking, so appropriate that it's here in North Dakota because we really are leading the way forward in energy development, and not just in oil and gas, but in different types of energy and doing it with new technology that's producing more energy and doing it with good environmental stewardship. So great day, congratulations to everyone involved. And of course 1956 was well before you were born. Right. <laughs> oh, about a year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, the only one here that was uh, older than that. No. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, the national energy policy and what sure. we're looking at on a, on a national basis. Uh, we have a regular chance to talk with Congressman Kevin Kramer, and of course I think he's in a special place uh, having come from the PSC here in North Dakota uh, to have a little bit of an insight on what's going on uh, in Washington when it comes to energy and some of the committees that he's on. Uh, from the Senate side, uh, give us a little rundown of, of what you're battling against uh, with what we're dealing with here in North Dakota because we are leading the way in the, in the nation when it comes to energy. No question about it. You know, I started as governor in 2000 and we developed a comprehensive energy plan and you're really seeing uh, how that's developed over the last decade in a big way in North Dakota. We set out to make North Dakota an energy powerhouse and it is. And it's oil and gas, it's coal, it's uh, renewable, it's wind, it's the whole uh, uh, gamut. And so I brought that background to the United States Senate. I'm on the Energy Committee in the Senate. And what we're trying to do, or at least what I'm trying to do, is we had an Empower North Dakota Energy Plan in, in, in this state that we built. Comprehensive energy plan. Now I have Empower legislation at the federal level to try to empower a state's first approach where the states across this great country can do the kinds of things we're doing here in North Dakota because we reduce that regulatory burden and we encourage that investment that deploys the new technology that produces more energy with better environmental stewardship just like we've done here and are doing here in North Dakota. How much of an uphill battle, of course you've got that long history with energy here in North Dakota, uh, Ed Schaefer to you to uh, Governor Dalrymple, uh, we have that history here in North Dakota, we have that uh, relationship with our current uh, uh, congressional delegation as well. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, trying to get that mindset of states first when it comes to energy and, and get the Senate over the hump and get them going down a path where other states can start playing catch up to North Dakota when it comes to leading the nation in unemployment, leading the nation in economy, leading the nation in a lot of different categories. Mm -hmm. How do you work with those other states? W what are the questions they have uh, other than the fact that it's not just the fact that we have the resources but we understand how to use them and how to capitalize on those. Other states have resources too. You know, um, for example, the shale play across this great country, whether it's the Eagleford or the Barnett in Texas, the Utica in uh, Ohio, or the uh, Marcellus in Pennsylvania and New York, the Niobrara, you name it. There are uh, energy plays, and not just uh, oil, gas, um, biofuels, all you know, both traditional renewable sources of energy. Uh, nuclear energy, all these different types of energy across the country, and everybody's got an opportunity to develop them, but you've got to create the legal tax and regulatory climate that empowers the private sector rather than continuing to grow the government and create more regulation. So the key at the federal level is that we get people that understand that you empower private enterprise, the private sector, the entrepreneurs, American ingenuity, like I talked about today at the groundbreaking, rather than continue to have this big burdensome government with more regulation that actually actually blocks energy development and when you block energy development then you don't get the energy uh, not only do you not get the energy but you don't get the jobs and economic growth that goes with it as well and that's what we need for our national economy. How hard is it to get through that gridlock and that mindset and change Tough. that mindset? Tough. For it's very hard to change that at the national level but that's what we have to do 
to get on top of this debt and deficit, we need to cut our spending, but we also need to get our economy to grow and get people back to work. And that's why we've got to do things in Washington, D.C., much more like we do them in North Dakota. You know, Senator, uh, Steve and I have spoken that this is really a North American issue that we have going on here. North American energy. Uh, exactly. And this is energy security. We talked about uh, prior to uh, uh, Hugo Chavez passing away that we get two million barrels per day out of Venezuela. So we are sending to an OPEC uh, country that doesn't necessarily like us $180 million a day leaving our shores. Imagine what that would be when it's inside of our own borders. Hence, uh, we had TransCanada on talking about the XL pipeline. Right on. Uh, what, what, what is the feeling? I'm kind of going towards the XL now. Um, uh, what, what's the feeling out there? Do you think uh, that uh, I mentioned earlier in the first half hour, I think there's kind of a tipping point that's going on? That logic uh, may rule the day here when it comes to uh, energy uh, security here? You know, I hope so. I, I'm going to continue to push the way forward, as I've just described, with the kind of legislation that empowers states and empo empowers private enterprise to lead the way forward in energy development. We can be energy independent or energy secure in this country within five years, meaning we produce more energy th than we consume with Canada and some help from Mexico. So North American energy independence, energy security, meaning we won't have to import one single drop of oil from the Middle East. Think what that means in terms of energy, in terms of jobs, in terms of national security. We can absolutely do it. A great example, Keystone XL Pipeline. I've got a bill in uh, to approve that because the president has held that up for five years. Here's vital infrastructure that would take 500 trucks a day off our roads because we're going to put light, light sweet, lock and crude into that pipeline along with Canadian crude sent it to our refineries. That's been held up for five years. So I've got a bill to approve it, and as a matter of fact, we had a test vote on an amendment that I added to the budget where I got 62 votes in the Senate for the pipeline. So we're going to get it, but the whole point is we cannot hold up major projects like you know this Keystone XL pipeline, multi-billion dollar project, vital energy infrastructure, for five years. That's the wrong way to do things. At $180 million yeah. a day. we got to change that. That's what we're working to change in Washington, D.C. You know, Senator, having you there and also with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Heidi uh, being out there, I think that you have a one-two duo out there, or, or actually working together that there's this common sense that is headed out there. And what I and when you mentioned the Barnett and the Eagle Ford and the Permian, and you can take all these shell, uh, and I'm involved in all those locations. Those people are up here. Our people now are down there. Mm -hmm. I really believe that you're seeing this nucleus uh, of major states that are going to have a tremendous amount of power in upcoming elections. Uh, and, and I believe you're starting to see some of the power from the coast moving inward. Do you see that type of change? Yeah, I sure hope so, because when you look at, you know, where are jobs being created? Where do you have uh, economic growth? Where are they reducing taxes? Where are they doing the things that, that really get the economy going and growing and, and create a higher standard of living? I mean, what this country's always been all about, it's in these places, like you say, in the heartland where we're doing things with energy, we're doing things with high tech, we're doing things with advanced manufacturing. I mean, that's always been the strength and the hallmark of America, and that's what we have to get back to. And, uh, you know, like you say, on the coast, they're struggling because they're still taking that big, expensive government, big regulation approach, and that's the wrong approach. And, and we can change that and empower our people and empower our businesses across this great country. News comes out today, uh, the end bridge pipeline uh, that uh, was going to haul Bach and Crude uh, to the Great Lakes uh, is hung up. Uh, how do you get through that? And that goes back to that mindset. And then that, I think, just puts an exclamation point on how important it is to have a refinery like this MDU facility here in North Dakota. No, right on, Steve. Kevin Kramer, Congressman Kramer, made a great point today. It's not just the regulation, it's the regulators. In other words, you need common sense, simple, straightforward regulation that is certain and understandable and so that business knows the rules of the road, and then you need regulators that understand it is their job. Once again, I'm going to use this word to empower people. They're not gatekeepers. They're not. They shouldn't be tying people up in red tape. They should say you have to do it right. You have to do it well. But here's how it works, and we're going to help you. We're going to help you make that investment because we know that means more technology to produce more energy, jobs, and do it with better environmental stewardship. 
It's their job to make sure things are done right, but to make sure we make these investments, get the energy, grow the economy. So it's more a question of just getting that North Dakota way uh, off to Washington, because these are things that we've been dealing with correctly uh, when you're looking at the EPA and, and water issues and everybody else looking to North Dakota going, yeah, we trust you because you do it right, you've been doing it right for a long time. That's the attitude we've got to get to Washington. Hence the idea behind our Empower States legislation. What it says, it's a state's first approach, whether it's hydraulic fracturing, whether it's any of these energy issues, it says, look, empower the states to work with businesses to make sure you have simple, straightforward, understandable regulation, that you have low taxes, you empower this business development and job growth. The states around the country that are taking that approach are doing well. The ones that continue to have these kind of big bureaucracies and high taxes, they're struggling, and that's and the country as a whole is struggling with that approach, which is why we've got to change it, and that's exactly what we're talking about, is the states that are doing it the way North Dakota's doing it, you know, in terms of business creation and how they're working with, with uh, companies and, and uh, entrepreneurship, they're the states that are doing well. Senator Rubber gets a break. Uh, can we hold you over the break for a couple of few minutes? Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk more with... Uh, uh, Senator John Hoban, former governor of North Dakota, and uh, one of the key individuals helping put North Dakota on the path for energy uh, independence and the country as well. Uh, that is a road that we need to be on, and North Dakota is the forefront. We're leading the way with that, uh, along with uh, states such as Texas and Alaska. And you know, it, it comes down to doing things right and doing things what I like to call the North Dakota way, because we do have a handle on that and making sure that things are done in an equitable fashion. Uh, where everybody's a winner. I'm Steve Bach, along with my co-host Tim Fisher for uh, from Bakken Energy Services. You are tuned to Energy Matters on KFIRE 5.